So I have made something up. I don't even know where it came from. So I started out, uh, the first thing we did actually within social media and gender equity was create Feminem. Feminem uh, was created for women in emergency medicine. It is was originally an open access resource for women in emergency medicine and it had its own t Twitter handle, Feminem Tweets, at the same time. And the idea was that we would develop a platform for the issues faced by women in medicine and that we would be able to start solving problems by having somewhere to address them. And so over the past three and a half years, we've really done some extraordinary work with Feminem in the ability to be both unap unapologetic advocates for change in medicine and also be a community of support for women across the entire house of medicine, actually not just in emergency medicine. One of the things that we've done recently also is we didn't just start a uh, blog and a podcast, we actually have a conference. So we have this in-person conference that we have, uh, it went from 250 people the first year to 700 people the second year to even more uh, now for the 2019 conference and it's a real chance for people to come together from around the world and discuss gender equity issues and their experience in medicine as humans, uh, you know, in real time, in real life. That's that. The other thing that we've done recently is March 1st was the launch of Time's Up Healthcare, which is a totally separate initiative from Feminem, but its mission is actually very much aligned, which is that every person in healthcare, not just physicians, um, not just women, but every person in healthcare deserves safe, equitable, and dignified work, and that we need to come together as a community, unite the entire healthcare workforce, create standard of, standards of practice that allow all people in healthcare to feel safe and dignified, uh, and really, really elevate the standards of the workplace so that uh, employers can know what resources they have and standards they should live up to, and employees know what resources are available to them and what would happen you know, to create a better environment for them as workers. And what kind of traction are you getting? It's very new days for Time's Up Healthcare, yeah. but what kind of traction are you getting? Where's the interest, where are the barriers? What so, are you seeing? It's extraordinary, actually. So we were lucky enough that we partnered with Time's Up Global, right, which is the Time's Up Network, and they are a international powerhouse, really. Um, and the women of Hollywood partnering, actually, and, and being inspired by these farm workers came together, and they really created this massive platform around this conversation. When we launched Times of Healthcare, um, we did it in a very kind of deliberate way that was really trying to be very inclusive of all women in healthcare uh, and really came out to say, no matter what your job is in the healthcare system, this is all for you, right? Whether you are a physician or a nurse or a tech or a home health aide or a phlebotomist or a pharmacist or a millions of other opportunities there are in healthcare. I think that we have been overwhelmingly, um, we've had really, incredible support from institutions that want to be signatories to our efforts, from individuals that want to sponsor what we're doing, from partnership organizations like colleges internationally that want to say, we want all of our members to feel that they have safe, equitable, and dignified work, and we want to align with you. So I would say that it's been a little remarkable as a volunteer workforce, which is what we started out as, and we still technically are, uh, to have that much, I mean, in America, Healthcare is one sixth of the American economy, right? It is the largest growing workforce in the entire American economic system. The idea that we are trying to create safe and equitable and dignified work across the board in that large aspect of the American economy is kind of overwhelming, but we're going to try. Barriers? What are you finding? I think that, that the enormity is actually the barrier. So I think that it is hard to be everything for everyone immediately. And I think there's been, there's been some very small hiccups along the way in how fast we can address these issues. So we are not going to have a robust infrastructure just yet to address all the inequities that exist in healthcare, uh, but we're going to start trying. And so there have been people that have not necessarily felt like their voice was heard already, yet we are listening and we are evolving and we are desperately trying to change the narrative as best as we can, as fast as we can. Before we get to that, is there something in your story that has led you here? So actually, no, that's what's remarkable about my story is I think, and that's what I said actually in the panel we were just at, is that this isn't, it's not personal for me insofar as it's not 
an experience. It, this is not a reaction to an experience I had. It's not like I was, you know, specifically harassed so much so that I had to come out blazing and saying, I'm going to take justice in my own hands and create change. It's more that this is a real problem in our system and that the change has to occur for everybody. And I, as somebody that has done this work over and over again, feel empowered to be part of that change. I feel like I have a voice that matters in the space. I feel like I have insight that I can create systems that will create meaningful change. So it, this is not a personal reaction for me to a, a grievance I've had. It's much more about the, 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 the justice for the healthcare workforce going forward and how important it is for all of us as patients, as physicians, as partners, as individuals. Now, um, in terms of today's event, we talked a lot about women in medicine, particularly. What, and we heard from you some some great, some big similarities with the U.S., but right. also some differences in the way our systems work. Right. What's your takeaway from what you heard today, and what you feel are the key messages? So, I think the first thing is that Australia and New Zealand are smaller than America, right? And that's that's the first opportunity for real change. And I think that there's a, a cohesion amongst the systems in, in Australia that we don't really have as much in America, just by sheer numbers. I think the other part of it is that you're starting out at a much, you're starting out like 15 feet ahead of us when it comes to social support that we don't have. You know, when we're talking about equitable leave for all parents, it does come at the behest of the idea that there is already parental leave, certainly maternity leave in Australia, and we don't have that in America. And so we're sitting here trying to convince people still that any leave supported by anybody who's not the individual is somehow better for society. We are, it's almost like if this is the goal line, Australia's here and we're like 100 feet back and we're not even at the, 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 the starting line right now. And we're walking backwards right now in our culture. And so I think that even as we fight the good fight and we see, but I am inspired here because I feel like change is not just possible, but it's inevitable. And I feel like being on a panel with men and women, young women, older women, um, but people in that room, it is inspiring. You also have talked, uh, and we're going to head somewhere with this, but th about the power of social media. I know you're in Australia also to talk about that. Yes. What, um, what has been your experience? Because it can be a very brutal thing, and in Me Too, of course, we saw the power of the hashtag, but we also saw some pretty brutal stuff. What's your... What's so, your it's funny. Um, so, there's a, so, I think social media is a very powerful thing, and I think it's actually a, mostly a gift. Um, I think that the ability to unite people across ponds and to create um, coalitions is is critical to progress. I think that for women in healthcare, it's certainly like feminine would not have existed without social media because I could never have joined so many women in medicine together. Social media allows lots of people to do very bad things and feel, makes them feel empowered that their toxic opinions are powerful. And I think that that is when you try to create change via social media, you have to have a very clear algorithm of how you're going to do that. And that means engage conversations with just about anyone that you want to engage with, but have a clear process by which you shut down trolls, people that are coming in just to aggravate you, who just want to make their point and have no interest in conversation. And what's ironic is the otter analogy, which we can talk about, came from that, right? So, you know, the otter thing wasn't my thing first. It was Esther's thing first. So Esther, Esther, Esther right, Chu Dr. Is. Esther Chu is the one with the 50,000 followers. So I have about 13,000. She oh, has 50,000. Well, I don't be there, mind. You'll be there by tomorrow. I'll be there tomorrow. But I actually, what's interesting about it is as a team, you know, people on social media very much see us as a unit, which I think is wonderful because it shows our solidarity. And there's actually a huge raft, and I'll explain this in a second, of women, but people who are doing this work together across oceans, um, you know, and are, are aligned in social media. So the story of the otter is simple, right? It was that this guy named Nicholas, if you really want to know who he is, was mansplaining, and that by that it means telling Esther something she already knew uh, on Twitter. And she decided she was going to throw up an otter because it was super cute. And that was really it. And it was otter time. Here's an otter just to confuse him. She didn't know what she was doing. She didn't understand the power of the otter. But then as we both went down the rabbit hole, we realized that otters have incredible analogies for women. And that this idea that female otters stick together in the water and that they hold paws and that they lay in these rafts, these huge coalitions of female otters, and that they are stronger by their network 
is the most powerful analogy we've found. And so the fact that female otters are bitches, literally, and that that entire network of floating otters is a raft of bitches is super powerful. And the raft of bitches analogy came because of the trolls, right? It came because of the social media people that feel empowered to undercut women and their voices. And what's ironic is by existing, they've made our voices more powerful. And it's not personal. We don't take it personally. And when it, something happens on social media and the call is made for all the otters to come out, we come out. And you know, the other part I will say is when you try to make change in advocacy via social media, you have to have a purpose. It is not to individually undermine somebody. It is not to create a space by which somebody loses their job. So we've had circumstances recently where a couple of men or women have been misogynists and have done some very bad things and said some very bad things on social media, and the power of the otter was released. There has been questions about whether our... Can you our, explain how you release it? So you, you basically just tag and and you put out your call to your people and you say this is what's happening you share what they're saying you share their words you're not putting words in their mouth you're saying hey guys do you believe that this person said this men shouldn't be feminists demeaning men who support women reminding people that women choose to work less hard and they deserve what they get these crazy statements and then the power of the otter is overwhelming compared to the power of the original voice. And then it's, well, they're bullies. We're the bullies, right? And that's ironic. And so you have to go back to the outcome. What is the point? Well, the point wasn't to diminish that person, to squash them, to make them feel bad or even worse about themselves. It's not to get them fired. It's to show them that words have consequences. And if you're going to be out there on social media saying things that are either inherently untrue or divisive and hurtful, stand by your words, right? If you want to say that the pay gap doesn't exist and you're going to tell everyone why it doesn't exist, well, be prepared for us to say it does and show you why you're wrong. But you're wrong. And so being wrong is your thing, not mine, right? And that's kind of the point. Um, but then stopping. Once you've proven them wrong, there's no reason to pound somebody when they're down. It's fantastic, and it's so helpful, isn't it, on social media yeah. when people get isolated there. Um, just so I don't want to leave with their voices, what's, you said you found it inspirational today. What's the inspiration you can offer to women in medicine uh, and to the, the broader question of representation? So I'm here today because of Twitter, like literally today in this room, right? So I was going to give a lecture at a conference in Australia. I'm giving it next week. And Beck, who ran this round, DM'd me on Twitter and said, hey, I hear you're going to be in Australia. What are the chances you can come to Melbourne on, you know, the week before? That's remarkable, right? She and I didn't know each other before this, except for our kind of social media interactions. And the power of that network to convene people across oceans about the common cause of equity and justice is incredible. And so that's inspiring. Because what happened today shouldn't or wouldn't have happened if not for Twitter or Facebook or whatever it is. And now there's an entire room of champions across the board on that stage talking about being meaningful change makers in Australia and around the world. And that room is inspired and they're gonna go do something about it. So it's exciting. It's fantastic. Also trended nationally right near the top. That's crazy. Yeah, that's great. It's all, it, yeah, I like to feel a little part of that, but it wasn't me. It you were back. a big part of it. Thank you so much, darling. Thank you so much.